started. Hello, everyone. I see you guys all hopping on. I'm just going to start with our weekly stuff, and then I'm going to give it away to Allie because she's going to absolutely just blow your guys' minds. Um, okay, so it is March 8th already. Holy crap. I feel like it was just March 1st. Um, so happening this week, um, I asked in the group pods that I have what they wanted to do for power hours, what day, and actually it was crazy because all four of you guys voted for, like the majority voted for different days. So I am running a power hour for my newer coaches on Wednesday. So if you have newer coaches and you want to hop on and you want to help, that would be awesome. Um, my group two is coaches who, um, have not really yet hit success club for, they didn't hit success club for February and they weren't even on the board for February. February. So we're going to kind of focus on some more, um, basics some more like, you know, coach foundation stuff on Tuesday. So if you have coaches, you can hop on and help. Um, and then obviously tomorrow night we're going to do this. Is, these are coaches who had points on the board, maybe two, maybe four, just didn't quite get to six. And so we're going to kind of work on just ramping some things up, maybe tweaking a few things that they're missing. So that's on, on tomorrow night. If you have coaches who maybe were on the board for success club, you know, had a couple of points here and there. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. And then my group three, my girls who hit success club will get a little mastermind slash power hour, um, on Thursday. So if you have girls who hit success club, you're in that pod, you can definitely bring them on and then we can kind of mastermind and stuff together. Um, so just wanted to let you know about those power hours. Um, because I noticed from our trackers from last week, we're kind of like missing the boat on doing like the things that are going to move our business forward. And so I want y'all to be here in two to three months. And so we're going to kind of dive deep into your trackers and just kind of see what's happening if we can't make some tweaks to just kind of improve those. So um, coach of the week is Brie. Um, so she is a newer coach. Um, she brings a lot of fire and a lot of like energy to the table. Um, she hit success starter for us in January and actually gave our team 25, um, like ranking points, which is huge because we would be like 250 in the company versus being 48 in the company, all because of Brie, which is insane. And so if you are a coach and you're pushing for a success starter, um, this means you're hitting success club the first three months basically the first three months, you have six months to hit it, but she did it first three months. Um, and so like, that's huge for our team. That's huge for your team and your upline and their team and just everybody. Um, and so that just means she hit success club the first three months. And then it was crazy because she was sitting there in February and it was like February, like 29th, like 9 PM. And like, we're all sitting there talking to each other and she's like sitting there hustling her face off to hit success club. And it's funny because she's like on the board already and at success club for the month of March. So I think sometimes as coaches, we just need to feel like, oh crap, like I waited until the last minute just to like boost us and understand what it's like and what it feels like and the difference to hit success club early in the month. Um, so she's definitely on the board, ready to rock March. Um, she's got her energy. She's so consistent in her fitness journey. She's up every single day doing her crazy videos and helping people. Um, and so now she's just really working to put like that CEO hat on and like just take off with her actual business. So keep your eyes peeled for her. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, we have our, um, guest speaker. So Allie is somebody I actually <laughs> creeped on, um, like a year and a half ago. Um, I was talking with Karina once and I was like, dude, message her and ask what her preset is. Cause I was too scared to do it myself. Um, and super funny. Like we were just like, I was creeping on her like hardcore. It was back when she was like Mar margaritas and mascara or something like that, or muscles and margaritas. And I just loved her freaking page because it, I could tell who she was by just looking at her page. And it wasn't like, I could tell she did fitness, but it wasn't like she was like this, you know, quote unquote beach body coach. She definitely like lived in her own element and you could, you could feel her energy through her pictures. Um, and so I asked her, I'm like, give me some of your accolades, even though I really just feel like she, to me is like a top coach. Like she like, you know, goes around, like does her shit. She knows what works and she just continues to do it. So, um, she is a two star diamond coach. Um, Success Club 10 Legends, so that means she helps five people every single month, no ifs, ands, or buts, and she's done it consistently, so that's super awesome. Uh, she retired herself in four months, you guys. How many of you are on this call right now? Like, uh, I want to retire myself right now. Um, she was able to do it in four months, not by messing around, not by leaving holes in her tracker, but like literally going all in, sharing her story, um, hitting success club, helping people change their lives. Um, she's like, I put this on there, but she's a huge social media guru for real. Um, she was on a call for push mastermind the other day and just did some, um, Instagram audits and even audited my page. And I was like, frick, I need to work on this and that. And 
Like, it's not that we're perfect by any means, but it's just listening to her and like what she's thinking and being coachable and knowing that like you can make little tweaks in your business to really up or ramp like your engagement or your page or whatever it is. Um, so she is literally like unapologetically herself. And I like to call her like my mystical unicorn because I don't know, like every time I go to her page, I'm just like, sis, you're like freaking magical. So, um, with that being said, <laughs> sorry, Allie, um, I'm going to let her go. I'm going to, you guys will like you. Yeah. I'm just going to let her do her thing. So I'm going to unmute you, sis, wherever you are. There you are. Hi y'all. I would put some light on the subject, but then you guys will see how much of death I look like. So we're going to keep myself in the dark and just imagine that picture is what I actually look like all the time. So hi, I am Ali. I'm so excited to talk to y'all. First, y'all have a bad ass team and y'all are amazing. So just give it up. Two time elite. That's insane. So, so freaking proud of y'all. So I'm going to share a little bit about my story and then I'm going to do some Instagram audits. So if you guys, I'm going to pick a couple just depending on how long winded. Usually I can cliff notes my story pretty well. Um, if you guys want me to go kind of through your Instagram and use, use you guys as a test dummy, then put it in the comments and I will make sure to pick a few of you guys. So like I said, I'm Allie. I have been a coach for exactly two years this month. Um, and so I'm, I still consider myself a baby coach, even though I've been in this for a couple years. Um, and my story is a little different than a lot of people's probably. So I started with Beachbody four years ago. I got engaged and I was like, you know, had a baby and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this whole gym thing. And I was like, I really need to start, you know, trying to get fit and trying to get healthy. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I couldn't stay consistent at the gym. And so I was scrolling social media and then I saw my coach who is Ashley Molstad. Um, and she was just so freaking full of life and she was so just herself and loved herself and how she was. And I was like, I don't know what crack this kid's smoking, but I, I need some of it. Because at this point, you know, I was almost 300 pounds. I was at the lowest point in my life and I really just needed that fire. And so I reached out to her um, and I signed up. I was one of those mystical unicorns that signed up right then and there. But after then was like, literally, I was the worst challenger you probably would ever have. I canceled Shakeology right away because I refused to drink shakes. I told her, I was like, the only way I drink my calories is in the form of margaritas, and this isn't a margarita, so I'm not drinking my calories. Um, I was like, this container system's bull crap. I'm not following it. I'm doing Weight Watchers. That's what's worked for me in the past, so I'm going to do that. Um, and then I was like, I can't really, I get bored just doing the same program again and again. So I just like skipped around program to program, and I did that for a year um, while I was prepping for my wedding, and then I got married. And when on my honeymoon, I had lost 20 pounds. I was feeling great, even though 20 pounds in a year, I was still like, okay, this is great. But I still felt self-conscious on my wedding day. And then after we went to the honeymoon, I completely fell off, gained all that weight back. And then we found myself January of 2018 in a rock and a hard place. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I, you know, I told, I reached out and I was like, I'm canceling everything. I'm just going to go get the lap band surgery because I thought I was broken. I didn't think I could lose the weight ever. I saw all these people that were getting results, but I wasn't getting any. And so I had a, a big meltdown and I was like, I'm broken. There's no way that I'm ever going to lose the weight. There's no way I'm ever going to get healthy. So I'm going to cancel everything. And one of my friends was like, okay, Ali, She's like, why do you think you're broken? And I was like, because I did these stupid programs for an entire freaking year and they don't work. All these people are just bullshitting everybody. Like they just don't work. And she's like, so why do you think they don't work? She's like, did you follow the meal plan? I was like, I followed a meal plan. She's like, did you do a workout from start to finish? And I was like, I worked out pretty much every single day. She's like, did you do a whole program? I was like, no, but I worked out. Like that's the whole point. And then she's like, did you drink your Shakeology? And I was like, no, I'm not drinking that stuff. And she's like, so why do you think it didn't work? She's like, use your freaking common sense. Why do you think it didn't work? And I was like, I don't know. And so she was like, there's this 80 day program coming out. And she's like, give me, give it 80 days, Allie. Like go all in, 
follow the stupid containers, drink the stupid shake, like figure it out for 80 days. And then once you give it your all, then decide. And so I pushed the appointment back from my lap band surgery, um, 80 days till, you know, because I was still convinced that I wasn't going to work. And I was like, all right, so I'm going to go all in. So I bought a challenge pack <laughs> and got my shakeology and then, you know, got the portion fix took some pictures of my food. Like I was using my Instagram for accountability purposes. I still refused to sign up for the because I was living, the dream. I was quote unquote That's living the dream. I was 21 years old. Um, 20, 22. I don't remember how old I was 22, something like that. Um, and I was working a nine to five job and that's like what every 22 year old dreams about, right? Never graduated college, never had any kind of accolades. I was working, you know, in insurance. I thought this was going to be my career. Um, so I was like this coaching thing that's cool for y'all, but for me, I'm working 11 hour days on top of being a mom of a toddler on top of I need some kind of rest and I just can't do that. So I signed up as a customer, um, and I went all in and within the first month I ended up losing 20 pounds and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is insane. And then I saw the price of the Shakeology for renewal. And I was like, this is even more insane. Like why would people pay this much? And I was like, I can't afford that. I was making $25,000 a year and I was living literally paycheck to every other paycheck. And so she's like, just sign up as a coach for the discount. She's like, you don't even have to do the whole business thing. I was like, okay, fine. Just for the discount. And so I, I signed up. And at this time I was still posting on social media, sharing my journey just for accountability purposes. Like if you guys scroll all the way back on my Instagram, you'll see like I went through Weight Watchers and all these, like they were bad posts. Um, but I was using it for accountability. So I had probably about 150 followers. Um, and a couple people had reached out because they just saw in the pictures that I was doing something and I was getting results. And I was like, yeah, just telling them what I did. And then my coach was like, you know, you could just sign them up and then get paid for it. Right. And I was like, okay, if they come to me, I can do that. But I'm not going to message people. I have to do that all day in my full-time job, literally a hundred cold calls a day. I'm not going to be doing that on social media. And so She's like, okay. And so my first month I ended up signing up three people, um, which I felt amazing about. I was like, oh, this is really cool. I just got my shakes paid for. Like, I don't think this is going to go anywhere, but it's really cool. But at the back of my head, I'm sitting here wondering because I'm depressed at my full-time job. Um, my daughter has a significant speech delay. So she was three year old, three years old at this or two years old at this time. And just now going through like speech therapies and stuff like that. And I had to miss every single one of them because of work. I couldn't get it off. And so my mother-in-law did them for me. And, you know, every single time I cried because I felt like I just was failing her as a mom. And I felt like it was because of me that she had these delays. And so I was going through a really bad depression. And then I just saw the opportunity through everybody else. And I was like, I just wish I could do it like they did. Like, I just wish I could retire myself. I didn't believe it was possible for me until I, till the first person that I signed up reached out to me a month later and said, Allie, thank you so much for, for doing, giving me this gift. She's like, you've literally made me a better mom, better wife. Her name was Julie. I still remember her to this day. And she basically just thanked me for changing her entire life. And I was like, no one has ever thanked me for selling, saving them $10 on their insurance. Like nothing's ever given me this feeling, saving somebody $10 on their car insurance. Like I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is why people do this. This is why people drink the Kool-Aid. And so I was like, okay, I don't know what I've got to do, but I'm, I'm willing to go all in. I'm willing to do the work that it takes. I'm willing to reach out to people if it means that I could bottle up this feeling forever. And I know y'all have felt it, right? That time that you've got that person reaching out or you see their transformation or you see how consistent they are in their journey or you know that their story is they failed so many times and it was because of you that they finally did it. Y'all know that feeling and that feeling is what gets us through those hard times. It's what gets us through those no's. And so I was like, if I could just bottle this up and so, I put it on a sticky note. So every day, whenever I had to got a no, or I was having to work really, really hard, I was like, I'm doing it for girls like Julie. 
Like I'm doing it for women like Julie who, who need me, who are out there. Um, and so I asked, I was like, okay, so what, so what can I do to be able to retire myself? And so I'm a real numbers girl. Like I know it's not all about the money, but at the end of the day, if your job, if your objective is to retire yourself, it's gotta be about the money. And so you've got to say, okay, so how do many challenge packs do I have to sell to be able to make X amount of money to then be able to quit my job? Right. And so I did all that figuring. And so I was like, okay, so this is how many challenge packs I've got to sell. This is how many I've got to do. And so my second month, my second month as a coach, I hit success club 20. My third month as a coach, I hit success club 42. And then my fourth month as a coach, I was in the sixties. And so by my third month as a coach, I had gotten my very first check that surpassed my full-time income. And of course y'all, I'm not, I was not like a big baller in my full-time job. Like I was making, you know, $25,000 a year. And with that one check, I was like, okay, so you've proved that you can hustle after hours that you can wake up, you know, stay up late. I wasn't a wake up early kind of girl back then. I was like a stay up late kind of girl. And you know, you can hustle in the bathroom. You can do all these things you've proved to yourself. So what happened? What would happen if you just burned, you just burned the boat, right? You just burned the whole damn Harbor and you just quit where you forced yourself to have to show up. And that's the type of person that I am. I'm the type of person, and you might be this type of person too, that you're like, I know if I had, like, if there's a plan B, I'm not going to work as hard. I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to do the things that I know I need to do because I know that I have this to fall back on. My full-time job was my security blanket that kept me from always going all in, from always, you know, doing the extra mile and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what, if I quit this job, there's always other jobs. I can always go and find another job. If I quit this job and I go all in, I've already proved that I can do it at part-time hours. What could happen? And it was just that possibility. And I told my husband, I was like, honey, I really want to quit my job. And he's like, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, I really want to quit my job. He's like, I know I can do this. This is what I made with Beachbody this month or this week, um, and then this month, and I really know that I can do this. And he's like, if you believe you can, but the second that we're not making the money we need to, you've got to go back to work. And I was like, okay. So I gave my two weeks. I was like, you know, I know you don't believe in me, and I know you don't think this is cool, but I'm going to do it anyways, because you, you know those times your husband says, okay, just because he doesn't want you to gripe, but he really doesn't want you to do something. This was that time. But I was like, you know what? You said good, so I'm going for it. So I quit my job and I have um, been working this full time next month ever since. And so that's just a testament to know that y'all, just because you make crazy decisions and just because, you know, people doubted you, y'all, everybody thought I was insane. Everybody thought I was bat shit crazy for quitting my job. That, you know, there was no proof that I could hold this consistently. And of course it wasn't. But I knew that when my back was against the wall and I knew that I needed to pay my electric bill or something, and we weren't an income household where we could survive on my husband. So I knew that it was sink or swim. I knew that I had to show up or I would have to go back to work. And so every single day, and I, this is the exact same picture that I've had on my desk every single day, my husband and my daughter, you guys see, she's this young cause I still have not changed it. Like I look at that and I'm like, it's for them. I've got to do this so I can be there for her. And now for this one that I'm carrying and, and I now have such a more profound why. And so if you guys are really wanting to retire yourself, you really want to bring yourself home. You really want to make this a full-time thing. You've got to make it a non-negotiable. Y'all, I was working 11 hour days. I had an hour commute each way. I refused to wake up early. I was like that one that woke up 45 minutes to get her child ready, rushed out the door. I was doing hour long workouts after work. I didn't have the time. It wasn't convenient, but you make time for the things that you want, the things that you find important. And when you see the possibility of these, like, let me be a testament to the possibility of this business. Y'all, I was nothing special. I was three, you know what? I hate that saying. I am very special. We're all special. We all have amazing qualities, 
but there's nothing different from me than there for you, except my work ethic, except that I was willing to show up every single day, send the invites that I needed to send. Y'all, I was incredible. I had 250 followers on Instagram, no following on Facebook. And I was, you know, just under 300 pounds. I had everything against me but I proved to myself that I could do it with every life that I changed with every person. And I gave people something to look up to, something to aspire to, because I wasn't that quote unquote fitness person. It was just a mom trying to get healthy, trying to get fit, to look good and to be able to drink her margaritas and not feel bad. Like that was my why. And so I just want you guys to realize that y'all can do these things. You guys can do the hard things that it's just a matter of, are you willing to? I would, I can tell you every single thing I did. I can tell you, I would sit down every single night and send 60 invites every single day. And I can promise you that I probably work circles around you then just like I do now. And that's the difference. You have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to put your excuses aside and remember why you're doing this. Remember why you're showing up. Stop using the excuses. I don't have that many followers or, you know, I just, I just don't feel like I can reach out to people like this, or I don't know where to find people or any of the other million bullshit excuses that we give ourselves. Find a way. Google, YouTube, you guys have a badass upline. You have a badass uplines upline. Like y'all are part of a powerhouse team. Utilize that. You should have zero excuses because you have more than enough resources. All right, so that's my little spiel. And then I guess we can get to the auditing. Um, does anybody have any like questions that they want me to answer? I, anything? I know that's like the awkward time where everybody stares at me very silently, but then they're waiting on that one person to ask the question. Then they feel like they all can ask questions. So I felt like I would just put it out there. It's always the awkward part of the call, right, Megan? And then, that, right, I, then the coach has to ask the questions. Then they feel like they, sorry. No, I, I always like, it's like after you teach a lesson, you're like, do you guys got it? Do you have any questions that are like, huh? Like frozen, like, holy shit. I just have to, um, can you repeat the last sentence that you just said? The zero excuses because you have what? A million resources? Is that what you said? I really don't know what I said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was writing it down. Like, I'm pretty sure that's what she said, but like, that just like got yeah, me. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, we can't use excuses because we have the resources. It's just. Right. Like, that got me, and I was like, cool. <laughs> bitching. I'm glad it got you. Watch the recording back. I really don't. I really go to like minute, like, you know. I'm not the person that has like these really good like taglines that I use all the time. Like, <laughs> that's your new That's just like flows out of my head. And the people are like, what'd you say? And I'm like, I don't know. Watch the recording back. <laughs> I love it. Like, minute 23, I'm writing this down to go back. And look. <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, that's what you said because I was like, damn, that literally is like, yeah, that's it for sure. But it wasn't really a question. It was, well, I guess it was a question. <laughs> More of a question statement type thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So looks like we don't have any questions. So I'm going to pick a couple of y'all's. Let's go with Jodis. Jody. Unmute yourself, girlfriend. How hey, are hey. you? Good. How are you? Good. Am I able to share my screen on this? Yeah. All right. Can y'all see that? Hey, PS, you're on your phone, right? Yeah. Can you like later teach me how to do this? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's super simple. It's just through like, I found it on Google <laughs> and it's, it's life changing, but yeah, I'll, I'll send you the YouTube video that I got. Okay, yeah, because I tried it yesterday oh. and I think I broke my apple, it's fine. It's fine, we're fine, everything's fine. Okay. Is this you? Yep. Okay, perfect. Oh, you're so cute. All right, so I will kind of walk you guys through everything I go. I go from top to bottom, um, and then I do a little bit of back and forth. So first, I like to go to the stories. And so what I look for on the stories, and do you have them on a tracker similar to Josh's? What kind of tracker do you have them on? I think she's asking you, Megan. Oh, sorry. Um, um, so I just did the Beachbody tracker in Josh's tracker and mashed them together and I created you my- You have them like the stories, making sure they record the, like stories. 
their workout and stuff like that? Yeah, a lot of them have the beach body tracker. <laughs> okay, just making sure because that's what I'd like to go over whenever I look at it. Yeah. All right, so we've got workout. Oh, you're so cute. Um, and we've got lifestyle. <laughs> I look for people. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I see is no talking. When I go to people's stories, I look for somebody who is engaging, who is connecting, because I believe that stories is where we sell. Stories is where they get to know us. Stories is how they get to know our personalities. And stories is where they get to trust us. This is where when we do send them the invite, they already feel like they know us. So we kind of have to, we don't have to do all that back and forth connecting BS because we just have to get to know them since they already know us. And so I always make sure I make it a point every single day to have a conversation with the people I'm follow the people that are following me. Share about my day, do some kind of humor, show them my personality, include them in my life through me talking because that way they feel like I'm talking directly to them. And so thought it would be a pointer to just make sure that you're always talking to them. I know how awkward it can be to talk. Y'all, I kid you not, I feel like I sound like a man. Like, I hate my voice. I make sure my phone is always on vibrate when I talk. So when the story is over, I don't have to even hear myself. And I just post it. And people think it's crazy. They're like, you don't even rewatch your stories. And I'm like, no, because then I would spend 25 minutes judging how I talked, how I sounded. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. And then I wouldn't end up posting it. And it's unauthentic. So I just... My biggest tip for everybody, if you don't like talking, you feel uncomfortable with it, do it anyways, because I do too, but that excuses don't sell. <laughs> so just put your phone on vibrate and move on. Um, okay. So that would be about your stories, but I love that you showed a little bit of your life and your workout. Um, I always say on workouts, do a call to action every single day. I know we feel like we're icky. We feel like we're selling. We feel like something like that but they don't know that they can join us if we don't tell them every single day. And so if you don't have swipe up, do the vote, you know, circle the bottom. Like I used to do all that stuff, but make sure that they know that they can join you every single day. Do a call to action every single day. And I know that sometimes we feel like that's Sally, but how many times does it take for somebody to see the exact same thing? Statistically with sales, it takes, I think, 11 interactions for them to finally even bite the bullet. And so if they don't see that they can join us every single day and we, they, we just assume that they know they can join us, assumptions are like buttholes. Everybody has one, right? And so I like that you have an engaging one. Perfect. Oh my gosh. I hate y'all for going to Punta Cana. I'm 35 weeks pregnant, so they advised me that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Um, okay, so we got high vibes only, passionate about helping others realize their potential, plus inspire them to live out their dreams. I A, Enneagram 7, Wing 8, and click to join. All right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of dissect this real quick. Um, with your location, are you really trying to like, is your location a big part of your brand? Like where you live, do you always go hiking? Do you share your favorite coffee shops? Like, do you make your location a big part of your brand? No. And why is it? <laughs> Not really. Good question. <laughs> My thing is, okay, y'all. This little gold mine of a section of Instagram we have is our first impression. It's like our magazine cover the, the details of the name of the, the book or the magazine cover or whatever like that. It's what people expect when they scroll down a little bit to see our page. And so if I see this, I'm expecting somebody with high vibes only, what, whatever that means. I don't, I don't even know what that means. So I don't know if your, your avatar knows what that means. Um, I expect to see stuff about Iowa. Is that what I is? I'm such an idiot. Um, <laughs> and then Enneagram 7 wing 8. What is that? I don't even know what the Enneagram is. is. Do you make the Enneagram a really big part of your brand? Do you talk about it all the time? Do you like post about it? Do you talk like, like I know a speech body coaches freaking love our Enneagram, right? Like we die by the Enneagram, but would you know about the Enneagram unless your coach told you about the Enneagram? 
No. <laughs> that's like that's my thing is we're we're talking to the us's before beach body. The us is that scrolled social media and liked like fashion bloggers or really funny pictures of dogs or stuff like that. We didn't know what personal development was and we sure as hell didn't know what an Enneagram is. The quizzes that we probably took were on the back of the Cosmo magazines. Like whose boyfriend was this or whatever, like stupid things like that. And so my, my thing with, with this is I like to look at this and know what the person's about. What are things that you are going to be talking about? Things that you enjoy. I love your, 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 your mission statement, right? Passionate about helping others realize their potential plus inspire them to live their dreams. That's amazing. So when I scroll down, I'm expecting to see somebody who just loves, loves life and is living life to their fullest potential and, and dreaming big and helping others do the same, which looks like, looks like you, you know, you've got lots of smiles, lots of enthusiasm, high vibes only. Okay. Like I get like, she might just be vibing high, but I want to know what else, what else are you into? What else are you passionate about talking about? What, what are things that you can put here? So like for me, I put finish because like they know I love my margaritas and I try to eat salads sometimes like imperfect mama, like things like th that describe me that they know that they're going to be able to get. And so that's the only other thing that I would say is, is kind of take the Enneagram out. Like nobody needs to know your Enneagram number. You can talk about that. Um, no one really needs to know where you live, especially with what we do. We don't, we don't do anything local. Um, and use that one section there to kind of tell them what else they're going to get. So the next thing I look when I scroll down, I look at the next, what's three, six, 12, whatever, 12 photos. I want to make sure that you're sharing at least one transformation every six photos. And so far you haven't done that. Um, why do I, Say once every six photos because that means once a week sharing a transformation photo and our job is transformations y'all we should not be afraid to share the shit out of transformations whenever i am on my journey even right now i make sure i share it twice a week i share one on sunday and one on wednesday um and so that's kind of equally spread apart so people always know what they're going to get when they come to my page because that's the first thing they see when they're coming to follow you, they don't scroll down. They look here, they look at the first couple pictures, and then they make that split decision. And so that's one thing I would, I would say. Um, another thing is, I don't really know much about you. Like, what are the five things that make you you? What are those five things that are your things? That's a question, not a statement. Oh. Um. <laughs> Me, Megan and me were actually talking about this the other day. Um, I would say like friends and family, um, fitness. Um, I mean, my team name is High Vibe Tribe. That's kind of why I'm like High Vibe, Sunshine, like Enneagram Seven, obviously. But um, and then and that's cool. And if High like, Vibe, if High Vibe's your thing, then like I would just always have photos that are just like super vibrant, like a feed that's just like skewing just positivity and vibes like mm -hmm. that's cool if that's something you really want to brand because then that's something like you could be talking about like hey girls hope you're having a high vibe day or something like that like you could almost quote unquote trademark it so if you want to make that a big part of your brand i just say if you're um okay anyway sorry so vibes family and friends um fitness what are the other two um, I would say I said food, but I don't have food on my page at all. I posted one earlier today, but I deleted it because I get like 20 likes on my food pictures and people don't like really seeing that on my feed. I feel like that's where I like struggle. Um, and they like seeing my face more. <laughs> so I would like food, but I don't have it like anywhere on my page. Then it's not really yeah <laughs> so you do really like gotta work on that again. so yeah y'all as coaches and i am sure megan has done this we drill into your brain what are the five things that make you you from like day one and so whenever i ask girls and they're like oh my god i don't even know you should know these things backwards forwards, sideways up down crisscross 
through your butthole, whatever. Like you should know them. <laughs> um, and so whenever I scroll down, I want to see what your five things are. And I want them to be prevalent because when we're, y'all, when we have those five things, that's what we used to grow our network, right? So like for me right now, one of my big things is I'm expecting. And so what I do is I go to a bunch of expecting moms and follow their pages. What do they do? The first thing they come to my page, why is following me? Oh, wait, she's expecting too. Cool. I want to follow her journey. Follow, you know, or I was a big part of my brand before was like she said, margaritas. I always had a margarita somewhere. So I would follow people who also like margaritas and they would see that's why. And so if we're going to these pages, maybe it's a fashion blogger and following their followers and you're wondering why you're not getting followers back. It's because they're not getting the same kind of content that you're going to those pages and following them. And so you've got to find things that make you, you, maybe you like fashion. Okay, cool. Do you know, fashion tip Tuesday or fab fit fun Friday. I don't know, whatever people do, you know, maybe it's makeup, something like that, but you've got to make sure that it's on your feed. You've got to make sure that people can see it. Y'all our brand, the five things, only one of them, maybe, and this is a big baby, two of them should be anything beach body related. The other three things should be about you. Our feeds should always be 25% beach body, 25% fitness and business and all that stuff, and 75% us because people do not follow beach body coaches for beach body coaches. They follow them for the people that they're, you know, the, the person that they are. Oh, she's a mom too. Oh, she says the F word just as much as I do. Oh, she likes margaritas just as much as I do. They follow you for that stuff. Stay around because you inspire them, join you because of the common interest. And so if you're not sharing that parts of your life, they're not going to stick around. They're just going to be like, this is just another page that makes me feel like crap about myself because I'm not working out. I'm not staying fit. I don't have you know, this enthusiasm. So I'm unfollowing it because I don't want to feel like crap. So that's my tip there. So with your page, I love the aesthetics. I love the light. It looks great. I would work on honing in your five things um, and make sure you're bringing value because here I see a lot of selfies of yourself. Um, I see one before and after, but I don't really see much other stuff about your life. Like high vibes. I don't really see much about just like you just oozing sunlight and just oozing enthusiasm and, and stuff like that. And when I think of high vibes, I think of somebody that's just like crazy, like excited, Enneagram sevens, just like out there. So that's some stuff I would really work on with your page. And then if friends and family is a big thing, then you need to be able to be including them in yours and talking about why you love your friends and family, what they've done, why you're doing this for them and stuff like that um, to really tie all that stuff in, okay? All right, let's go Mama Jen Dietrich. Probably botched that. Jennifer Dietrich. Is she on still? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. All right, perfect. So let's see what we've got. All right, we got pictures kids no talking so that again that's another thing I would say we are every single day even if we feel like crap y'all i still talk and i let them know i feel like crap but we've got to always talk to them um let's see toddler mom full-time student embracing her 30s without wine helping busy women get fit living fit and live a life they love. Okay, perfect. So I'm guessing a big part of your brand is like sobriety. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So when I scroll down then, so do you, do you target people who are like, is that a big part of who you are now? Like, do you target people like that are on a sobriety thing, like on a sobriety journey or, you know, do you talk about it a lot? Um, yeah, I used to talk about it more because I would make, um, like mocktails with energize and stuff. Um, but when I go to connect with people, I usually go to those types of hashtags and pages. Okay. So 
like I said, it, it's great. And I love, I love that that's your mission. Um, but I would talk about it like with pictures of yourself and why you've chose the sobriety route and maybe struggles and what maybe brought you to that route and make sure that when they come to your page, at least one every nine photos is something talking about that, either sharing your mocktails or sharing why you chose that. Because when they come to your page, they're gonna wonder again why that she wants to follow me and then they'll see that y'all have that in common but they're going to want to value around that, especially if you're going to make it part of your brand. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I know sometimes sobriety and like, it's hard to be vulnerable around that, but I always share, um, I love how Moira Kasaba does it. She shares, you know, why she chose it, her journey, the struggles, you know, about the beer being in the fridge, stuff like that. And so I don't know your story behind it. Um, but I would definitely share more. So at least, one every nine photos sometimes in your stories especially if you're targeting those people um they need to know why how you found them all right so helping busy women get fit and live a life i like your things so we've got in there we've got a transformation perfect so toddler mom we've got work fitness Perfect. So what are the five things that you really like are centered around? Um, being a toddler mom, um, being a full-time student, um, now being pregnant. Um, I do a lot about just basically how I live at the hospital because I also work there as well. So I spend like 56 hours a week oh. there. Um, so maybe you're going in on those five things a little bit more. Um, and, and really, because y'all, these things, they have to be concrete. They have to be what describes you and they don't have to be super big. Like my five things are, and I can share them now and before I was pregnant. So before I was pregnant, my five things were Old Navy and Duncan. Like literally all I was obsessed with Old Navy. I shopped there way too much. I don't fit in much now, so I don't buy much. Um, and I, and I was a caffeine freak. Like people ask me all the time what my drink was. Um, margaritas and living a, a balanced life. I mom, toddler mom, fitness, and then of course business. And so those were my five things. Now it's pregnancy. Um, fitness, still the balance of life and, and body positivity. And so knowing those five things, but it be the things that you're passionate about. Like maybe it's that you just are passionate about freaking target. Maybe you're passionate about, you know, body positivity or, you know, the, the things in life, just, you've got to make sure that you're giving those kind of value, 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 give, 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 and then take, right? It's the, it's the, the whole rule jab, jab, punch, where you're, you're jabbing, you're giving value, you're giving value, then you're going in for the sucker punch. And so we've got to really make sure that we're giving that value, that we are making sure that people want to follow us. I know how frustrating it can be when we go and we follow a hundred people and only five of them follow us back. But then we have to reevaluate and think, what is wrong with my page or the people that I'm following? And then you've got to kind of take a step back. My favorite thing to do to keep myself honest, I go to my husband who is a complete nimrod when it comes to beach body or my things or anything. He's super supportive. He's just not very into it. And I say, honey, if you look at my page, what would you think like describes me in it? Like, what, what do you see? And he'll tell me. And then I'll be like, well, that's absolutely nothing what I'm trying to go for. So then I need to reevaluate. Or I'll be like, okay, can you look at my stories today? How do you think I did? And he'll be like, um, you're really boring. I didn't even really want to watch them. And if my husband says I'm boring, then I know I'm probably being boring. And so just kind of getting those third, second set of eyes. And even if it's your coach, just getting her to go look at your page and say, hey, can you, can you go and just give me some feedback? And she'll go probably through something similar to what I'm doing. But we've got to make sure that we are giving that value, that we know our mission, that we know who we're trying to reach, that we're doing the things and sharing the things that make us us. 
I do five things because guess what y'all? There's five days in a week. That means I have a post for every single day. Every single, one of my five things, every single day I post it out. So one day it's pregnancy. One day I'm posting about body positivity. The next day, you know, I'm posting about my business and, and my entrepreneurship. Next day I'm posting about my, my fitness journey and stuff like that. Then the other day I'm doing my matching mini me outfits or something like that. Every single day, one of my five things. So then every single day, I don't have to wonder what am I going to post because I just think, okay, what am, which one of my five things have I not shared about? Which one of my five things have I not posted about? Okay. So that's what my post is going to be about. And it really helps us to be able to then curate posts and stuff like that. Um, I like your preset. I like how they all go together. It looks really aesthetically pleasing. The only thing, like I said, I would work on, I like that you've, you've really included your family. You've included your, your work. That's a really big part of your brand. Like you said, um, just really work on including the things that are up here. So like I said, sobriety being a big thing. I know it's probably a weird way to talk about it with being pregnant and stuff like that. Cause we're you have to be sober, um, but just finding ways to bring that in, especially since that's who you're growing your network around. Okay. Ashley, you. uh, gag, gagan, gagnon. Y'all I'm really bad at these names. Ashley, where you at? Uh, we got her still oh there she is i think i put the right one on there yeah ashley amber g it's not coming up is that you yep Awesome. All right. So let's see what we got. Ooh, look at the muscles. Y'all really don't like talking on stories, do you guys? <laughs> like none of y'all. Megan, if I go to your stories right now and you're not talking, I'm probably going to lose my stuff. I'm just kidding. Do it. <laughs> you're like, do it. I dare you. Y'all, we've got to connect people with our, with our, with us. They got to know who we are. We can't have 20 frames of our workout because they don't give two shits. Like <laughs> one to two, maybe like they care about who we are. They follow us for us. They don't follow us to screenshot our workouts. Like as much as we think they do. They get a little bit of inspiration from that, but they really follow us for us. So you got to talk. They got to know who you are. Okay, sorry. That's my little freak out session for the day. Um, so that's what I would say. Sharing more about your life, um, you can do with without like these. They're just gonna they're just gonna tap through. They're not gonna read. They're not gonna do anything. You'll have, I would say, two, maybe three workout frames. Is plenty. Other than that, they're just tapping through. They're not even watching. Um, it's kind of like if we're talking too much, like sometimes I'll get long winded and instead I'll have like five frames of me talking. You can see <laughs> that they get disinterested with every mm -hmm. single one. And so I say with workouts, you can use an app called Unfold. Um, we really like to show like quite a few moves. Um, this app is really good because you can show like them all on one frame and just put music behind it and it'll, it'll do like the same effect. Right. Um, but just having all those frames kind of just, they'll just tap through them. So that's one thing I would say. So we've got personal fitness, cat mom cares to share here to share my journey, inspire others. So what do you mean by like personal? Um, does I, post personal stuff on there like with friends and I, I don't really have who you are yeah <laughs> so I want you to think of like I said like I want you to think of your bio as a little sneak peek into what they're gonna see about like you know under those pictures in the magazine covers they have like the little the the like suspense or like make you want to open it and read the story like Kate all Kate 
Upton is getting married to six husband or something like that. Like, I don't know, crazy stuff. That's what this part is. It's giving them that little preview into what they're going to be getting. So personal and fitness, like you can say that you're on your fitness journey and sharing that. I like that because then they'll know that that's what they're going to get. But personal is not really needed there. Think of other things that make you you. What are other things that you're sharing? Is it food? Is it, you know, uh, what else makes you you that you can put there? Um, so I'm coming down here and I'm looking at your first nine. I see cat mom there, but I don't see a cat anywhere. They're usually on my stories. But what if I don't look at your stories whenever I decide to follow you? So, you know what I mean? And I don't mean to say that, like, I mean this in the nicest way possible. Sorry, y'all, if I get a little testy. But, like, we've got to make sure that we're sharing it in both places. I feel like sometimes we think, well, I'm sharing this in my stories. But sometimes people don't see our stories. And whenever I decide if I'm going to follow somebody, I don't really look at their stories. I look at their feed, their first couple pictures, and I'm like, okay, like, I like this one. Okay, cool. Like, I'm going to follow them. You know what I mean? But like, I don't really look at their stories. Um, and so if you're going to make being a cat a big part of your brand, which is totally cool. One of my friends, she's like the crazy cat lady. She's obsessed with her cats, but they're always like either in a few of her photos or she's talking about them. She's always sharing about them. So then when she goes to follow other crazy cat moms, they can relate with their crazy cats. You know what I mean? Um, so that's something I would work on. Also, every single one of your photos is like a fitness photo. You are so, y'all, I, I mean this in like the most loving way possible. And I always say that before I give tough love to make it a little easier. <laughs> we are so much more than beach body coaches. We are so much more than fitness. We are so much more than this business. And even us and the top of the network sometimes get a little lost in the translation, but y'all, you've got to make this 25% of business, 25% of your fitness, and 75% of you. They are not going to follow you because you're a beach buddy coach. There's a shit ton of us. Last time I checked, there's like 400,000 of us. They're going to follow you because of who you are. They're going to follow you because of Oh, she's a, she's a crazy cat mom too. I'm a crazy cat mom. I'm going to follow her because y'all, you have to think if we only follow these people, right? Like we only talk about fitness. That's a small portion of somebody's life. That's 30 minutes of our day out of 24 hours. That's 30 minutes. We still have 23 hours and 30 minutes of other things that we're doing throughout the day. And if we only talk about fitness, that means we go from talk, being able to reach this many people to reach this many people. Because not everybody is in the right mental capacity for a fitness journey, right? So like right now, I am sharing, you know, a lot about my pregnancy journey and a lot of pregnant moms aren't wanting to join me, but they're connecting with my pregnancy journey. They're connecting with my pregnancy struggles and then they're gonna join me when these babies come. I used to talk a lot about my fashion, my budget finds, my old navy. They'd follow me for me and my toddler's really cool matching outfits. And then they would see, oh, she's also into fitness. Oh, she also does this. I'm going to see more about it. They make the decision to follow us nine times out of 10 because of something completely unrelated to Beachbody. They don't want to follow us and feel like they're just going to be seeing another, you know, this person. They're not going to follow make yourself kind of feel like crap because they're not working out, but they see that we are, you know, they really want to be able to feel like they have value. So before you post something, I all, I really want you to think of, is this going to inspire somebody? Is this going to entertain somebody? Or is this going to provide some sort of value to them? And if the answer is no to all those, then don't post it, right? We have to make sure that we're always giving. We're always in that giving mindset because that's when people start giving back to us and joining us when they don't feel like we're just trying to sell them every which way or trying to make them, you know, breathing this fitness stuff all into their throat and stuff like that. And so I would really work on sharing more of your life, sharing more of who you are and the five things that make you, you, um, and really making sure that you are showing that on your page. The quote thing is cool. Like I, I, I know a lot of people that do that and they love it. That's great. 
but make sure that you're providing value with each of the quotes. Make sure that you're giving them, either entertaining them or something like that with each of the quotes and, and they still look aesthetically pleasing. Um, so that's the tips I would give you. I like how bright they are, it looks pretty, but I want more. I want more value. I want to know who you are more. I want to see your cat. I want to know more about who you are and what you bring to the table. Because it looks like you could bring a lot of fun to the table. You just are kind of stuck in the fitness bubble and we got to get out of that a little bit, okay? All right, so I think that's all that we have time for. Um, does anybody have any questions specifically? I hope that helped and I hope I wasn't too mean. No, you're fine. I have a quick question. So um, yeah. obviously fitness is like one of our five pillars, mm -hmm. um, but instead of doing like the selfies and stuff, um, I think we just, I know this is for me too, but like I just struggle because it's like, I, I don't know, I live in leggings and stuff. So I'm trying to like make it so that part's fitness versus like what I live in and like walk around it and stuff. And so like just- I haven't worn jeans in eight months. <laughs> I know. I'm just trying to like figure out, um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, I totally I just, get you, girl. I yeah. wear the same five pairs of leggings. They're on rotation right now. Yeah. Like I just, I feel like my, my fitness, obviously I'm an ex-athlete. So I want to take it more towards like that part that I do like beach body stuff, I guess. But I think, um, I don't know how to, I hate the word struggling, but like, I'm just like trying to think of different ways for a fitness part to like have fun with that. Um, I love sharing my story. I got that part down, like the ex-athlete sharing all that stuff, but like more than a sweaty selfie, I'm always freaking taking selfies in my workout clothes. <laughs> like, I need to like, I don't know, figure out a different way to share. I don't know. Cause my workout clothes are also part of my bargain buys that I have too, you know? So it's like, and so you can make them not look like a quote unquote sweaty selfie. Yeah. Like if you're, so let me go here real quick. So like I always make sure when I do sweaty selfies, they're always in like different poses. So like this one isn't a workout outfit, but it's, and I mean, it's, it's talking about, you know, the strong women and stuff like that. And so it's, it's a nicer looking photo. My hair's done, my makeup's done. So maybe that's the way you make it not look like all about fitness, or all about sweaty selfie. And you're talking about the outfit and giving value there. Okay. Um, I would just make sure that, you know, you, you do a little bit of your hair or something like that. So they know like, it's not just your sweaty selfies, but like your sweaty selfies, you can change them up. Like here's one, you know, with like muscles. And then I've got one of me and my dog planking. Like you could use your cat, wherever crazy cat lady was like, you could use your cat. So like using things, I like to use a lot of props, but I make sure that each sweaty selfie is not like the rest. Like these two, I have two next to each other, but they're talking about completely different things. And right. maybe people aren't as psycho about this as me, but I want to make sure that I don't have, my feed isn't all the same thing. Um, and so even if you live in leggings, like it, your tops are probably different. And so making it, you can dress them up or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but I would just use like, if you're, your fitness bargain buys and that's a big part of your brand, it just doesn't look like you're in the same room. Like you're all your sweaty selfies pose the exact same way. Like you've got nice looking ones and you know, how, like how to pose or go outside or something like that. Right. So I don't think that would, okay. I wouldn't consider that the exact same thing as a sweaty selfie. But when I think of sweaty selfies, y'all, I always think of like, okay, so these and these, like we, I do about three sweaty selfies a week, but I work out every single day. I showed in my story, single workout in my feed, just because again, people get annoyed with seeing the exact same thing every single day. And so I just make sure that I'm, I'm sharing other parts of my life with, with the sweaty selfies. I know sweaty selfies are a big part of who we are, but we don't have to always show those on our feed. <laughs> and I know it's easy because it's a post, right? And we're supposed to post every single day, but you got to include those other things of your life. You've got to include the other parts of you because people don't just want to see another fitness accountability page. Like that's what they're going to think if it's all sweaty selfies. Um, and the exact same thing with like, if we're sharing too much of the business, like if we're sharing just a bunch of us with our friends, like they're going to be like, my gosh, this is just somebody that's going to remind me I have absolutely no friends and I'm sitting here with my cat and I don't like people. Like, okay, I get it. You have friends. 
Like, that's how I used to feel about those sorority girls that were always like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get it. You've got friends and I don't have friends. Like, don't have to shove it up my throat. Gosh. <laughs> no, I love it. Perfect. Anyone else have any last minute questions? Um, how could I share my daughter more without oh, yeah. actually posting her pics? I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> could you do like, um, without showing her face? Is that what you mean, T? She's my like T baby. Where's she at? Unmute yourself. <laughs> there you are. I'm, you're unmuted. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, well, I don't share my daughter on social media, but she's like a huge part of my life. So I was just trying to like, how could I share more of her without actually like, Hey, here's her face. I mean, I don't really know the answer to that because I feel like we have to share them to be able to talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know Amy, is that her name? Amy Silverman. She doesn't like share her child, but like she has pictures with them and blurs out their face. I think it's a little creepy um, personally. So I would not be the best person to answer that question. Um, I feel like to share, to like, we have to share the big parts of our lives. And I know sometimes social media is scary sharing our kids and all that stuff, but we don't think twice about it on Facebook. So I always say, do what makes you comfortable. But if she's a big part of your life, then it's either you've got to make the decision to share about her. And I mean, you can post, you know, I guess pictures of her side or something like that. I don't know. Um, but if not, then you're just going to have to pick another thing to talk about, even though it's kind of crappy. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about someone said about like just different angles. So like you could have her like, I don't know, she's like, you can get like the top, you know, you could take pictures of yourself without showing your actual face. And then also doing like the cute, like things where you're holding hands and stuff. And she's like in front of you looking away or something, you know, like just getting, having fun with that and maybe sharing that part of you. Like this is my daughter and I, I don't know, sharing, you want to share her and talk about her because she's a big part of your life. But at the same time, like just not super comfortable, like. I don't know, posting her identity. But yeah, Amy Silverman is, hers are kind of creepy sometimes because she like blurs She's her face. really creepy. She like, like blurs out the face and like has like pictures of them holding, I don't know, I'm just. Yeah. Just <laughs> but to each their own. And <laughs> you always, have, like I always say, we always gotta, I say stretch ourselves, but if we don't feel comfortable doing it or for security reasons or whatever, then of course don't do it. Um, I just would pick another big thing to talk about. Um, okay. and you can of course talk about it on your stories and stuff like that, but it's really hard to center your brand around something that you're not willing to share. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So any other questions? I didn't see my okay. cat's on a damn mission for fries right now. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I don't see any more questions. All right. Thank you so much. Um